What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all doing well. Now in this video I'm going to be making a nice large capacity cross cut slate for my new table saw. Now it's nice and big and it has all the bells and whistles on it as well so we have a nice rail up on top of the front fence. We have a measuring tape right and left of the blade. We have a nice repeat stop we can slide up and down. We have T-tracks and hold down clamps as well. They are particularly important in my opinion um, because that blade is running without its guard on it in a cross cut slate and you never want to have your hands down in here holding a piece going either side of that blade let the hold down clamps do that work for you and save the fingers so safety first so yeah we're going to crack on and build this now i should just say you don't have to make it as big as this one this is a big one with all the bells and whistles but all the principles in this video will apply to a smaller cross cut slate without all this stuff on it as long as we keep our front fence square we're good to go and i link to everything in the description if you're wondering where you want to get this stuff and if you're in ireland i bought all this stuff from the carpentry store and i I'll link that below, that's where I got it. So let's crack on and build ourselves a large crosscut sled. Okay, so let's get on with this cross-cut sled build. Now, let me just briefly take you through what I'm going to use here. I haven't come up with the final dimensions of this cross-cut sled, so it's going to, going to be a case of build this as I go. I have a kind of a rough idea of what I want. I just haven't decided on the final dimensions yet. For the main body of the cross-cut sled, I'm going to be using three-quarter or 19 millimeter birch ploy. Now, birch ploy has got extremely expensive. In fact, all manufactured timber products have gone up by about 50%, so it is quite expensive. You could use three-quarter MDA, and to bring the cost down a small bit. I want to make a really nice cross cut sled with all the bells and whistles so I'm using birch ploy for this build. Three quarter inch or 19 mil would be a good solid base. It'll have a nice bit of weight to it and it should be good and stable to help with accuracy. So that's why three quarter. Now I'm also going to be using some UJK products here. So I'll get you for a close up with a few bits and pieces and then we'll start making this. Let's do it. Okay, so very quickly, this is what I have. I have some T-Track. These lengths are 915 millimeters. So I got two of those. They're a lovely kind of anodized orange. Again, all UJK stuff. I've got a couple of hold down clamps. So these guys, you know the crack with these. It just goes, this T-Nut goes into the T-Track and you can clamp down your pieces. Then I bought a kit. So this all comes part of the kit. This is the stop and track kit. So it's designed for mitre saws or pillar drills or anything like that. Anything you want to put a fence together with stops on it, then this is the kit you want. It comes with the measuring tape, both left and right side. And you have the flip stop then, slides up and down. You can lock it in place and you have the solid stop as well, which doesn't deflect, which is nice. And again, it's just a case of the quick release handle. You can slide this up and down and uh, you can put your pieces against this as a stop block. Nice and simple, not much to it, but they're really nicely made, I have to say. Uh, lovely anodized orange. So that's what we're going to be using. I'm going to be building this into the fence of my crosscut sled and we're going to be using these stops. This is going to go into the base of the crosscut sled. We're going to be using the clamps and uh, we'll also have an adjustable fence that I can add later on. So let's get on and build it. We need to decide on the dimensions. Right, so I just want to decide on the dimensions of my crosscut sled. Now I'm going to build a large crosscut sled. You can build these any size you want, but I want a kind of nice bit of capacity left and right of the blade. So I'm actually going to build this as big as I can get away with, and hopefully it won't be too cumbersome and unwieldy. We cut a bit of board now and we'll see. But the plan so far anyway is to use the full width of the sheet. So that's four foot, so it's going to be a four foot wide crosscut sled, which is quite wide, but it gives me a nice bit of capacity, like I say, left and right of the blade and it's going to be so that's 1.22 in metric and I'm going to make it 600 in width so 1.22 in length 600 in width so that's four foot by two foot and that makes it nice and simple then for actually dimensioning up that sheet because it's just straight cuts across the width of it for the fence and everything else to go with it. So our very first cut is going to be a cut at 600. I'll take that 600 or four foot by two foot, 600 by 1.22. We'll set it down here and we'll see if it's going to be too unwieldy. So that's my thinking so far. Let's just crack on and do it. Okay, so first cut at 600. I'm going to do most of the dimensioning with the track saw because it's just easier to break down a large sheet on a track saw rather than a tape. So, so let's cut this at 600 or two feet. Okay, so there is the base of the cross cut sled, four foot by two foot or 1.22 by 600. Now, that's actually going to be quite 
a nice size. It's a large crosscut head, but it actually increases the capacity of this machine, and that's not going to be too bad to push back and forward, especially when the fence is on. I can catch the fence, a bit of machine wax on this, and it will slide nicely on the runners. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It gives me about 500 millimeters to the left of my blade, and about 700 mil to the right of my blade. So that's about 20 inches to the left and 28 inches to the right. So you know, that's pretty good, and like I said, it increases the capacity of the machine. So we're going to actually run with this. Now, next thing I want to do is cut my back fence. Um, so I'm going to decide on the height of this. Now I should just mention that you don't have to keep the base square. That's not that important if this doesn't end up perfectly square. Don't worry about that. We will be squaring this fence off our blade so this doesn't have to be square. That's one thing I should point out. Now I'm going to decide on the height of our back fence and again this doesn't have to be square to the base either. This is just a stabilizing fence. So let's get you in for a closer look and we'll get the height of our back fence. Okay so I raised the blade to its maximum height just so I can get a measurement from my back fence. Now, one thing I should point out, I'm using a 19 millimeter or three quarter base, so I'm losing that off my depth of cut here. So I've got about 60 millimeters left. So I wouldn't use anything thicker than three quarter or 19 mil, because you will lose too much of your blade. I'm not going to be doing anything much deeper than this on my cross cut slate anyway. So it's going to be for precision work, for box making, that kind of thing. So 60 mil is more than enough capacity. It should be anyway. So. I want to measure from my back fence. Now, this is going to be cutting straight through my back fence and this is going to be a stabilizing fence. So I want some material up here above my blade so that um, it stabilizes this piece because essentially you cut the entire bottom of your crosscut slate in half so your both fences will stabilize the base. So I have 60 mil to the top of my blade. I reckon another 60 mil um, should be good and that'll give me um, plenty of depth above my blade and that will give my back fence plenty of rigidity because this blade will be going straight through it as well. So I'm going to cut them now at 120 mil. That is about five inches in total. Okay, so there's our two pieces cut at 120 mil or roughly five inches and that's going to be plenty thick enough for our back fence and like I say our back fence is really a stabilizing fence so it holds the actual base together and it keeps everything nice and flat. Now I can see that I have a little gap in the middle here so this board is slightly bowed a little bit but this fence will help pull that all straight. So I'm just going to glue this now and I'm going to tack it with some tacks. I'm going to tack the bottom of it, let the glue all set up and then we're going to drive some screws into the base, some countersunk screws and that will help pull this base straight. So for now we'll just get the glue on, get it tacked up, we'll get it set aside because we have a few other things we want to make first. So nice and simple, just get a bit of glue on this. Spread it around a small bit. Let's get that set up nicely. Okay, here we go, there's our back fence on. Now one thing I should point out, don't stick any tacks or, yeah, don't stick any tacks where your saw corf is gonna be, so you don't have any cutting through uh, some nails or some brad nails with your um, good cross cut blade. Uh, that's not a good idea. So use them sparingly, they're just to hold it in place for now while the glue sets up. So that's happy days with that. Okay, so our base is cut to size and we have our back fence on. Now I want to make the runners that are going to run in our T-slots or our miter slots on our table saw. So I have two slots, so I have two of these to cut. They are roughly 17 millimeters, so I'm going to rip, rip them at 17 mil and then probably fine tune them with the hand plane so that they're good and snug in those slots. So this is a piece of red oak flooring that I've just milled up. I'm going to get two of them out of this, so let's do that. Okay, so there we go. Now they are pretty snug. So a little touch with the hand plane and it should sort them out so that they will slide in there nicely. 
Okay, let's just take a couple of shavings and this is just going to be a little bit of back and forth until we get this exact. So Casey just check and recheck. Okay, so there we go. There's our two runners now in our slot. Now, one thing I did notice about this table saw, the top of the slot is wider than the bottom, so I want these runners to be the full depth of the slot so that it's accurate as possible because it is, there's a bit of play in the top, but there's none in the bottom, uh, so these have to go full depth. Now, there's also a different in, uh, depth between this side and this side, so the cross-cut sled that's built into the table has a shallower slot, so if you're making it for this particular table saw, uh, just take note to that but they are fitting in there nicely and there's no slop and no play which is what I want so I just got to thickness these down to the correct thickness I'm going to let them be full depth of the slot and perfectly flush with the top of the table that's what I want because I want these bottoming out now because of the different thicknesses uh, this t-slot like I said is not equal the whole way down so I need these to sit the full depth so I'll get on and do that and then we'll get these attached to the bottom of our sled Okay, there we go. Happy days. Our runners are now ready to go. So they're fitting in their slots nicely. They're good and snug. They're flush with the top, which is what I want, and they're the full depth of the slot. Now, if your slots are more accurate than these, you don't have to go the full depth if they're the same thickness the whole way down. And halfway down into the slot will probably be good enough. But like I said, I'm on the full depth just because these slots aren't the same thickness all the way down, or the same width all the way down. Now, we've got to glue this to our base. So I'm just going to put a couple of washers down in the slot just to raise these up slightly. A little bit of super glue on them then. And we'll glue this to our base and then we can screw them in place. Put that guy in on top of them. There we go. We're just proud of the top there now, the thickness of the washer. So that should be perfect. Okay. Okay, let's get our runners attached to the bottom of our sled. Now, we're slightly proud of our top, and we're good to go. So I'm gonna run a bead of CA glue or super glue down these now and sit the sled directly on top of it. Let that go off, then we can lift them out and they should be in place. Now I've put a mark on the front of my table saw right here. I've put a mark on my sled that corresponds to this. That will give me 500 millimeters to the left of my blade, 700 millimeters to the right of my blade, and it will align everything up. And I'm just gonna use the front edge of my table saw to get this all aligned. Now this doesn't have to be square. So don't worry about that. We are gonna run a cut into our sled with our blade and we're gonna square our front fronts to our blade so we haven't got to get this perfectly square. Now we'll get it good enough, close enough, using the front edge of our table saw as a guide. So let's do that. Now I'm not gonna use any activator because I don't want this going off straight away it's just so I can uh, get it lined up properly so I don't have to rush. So I'm just gonna run a bead of super glue down these just enough to actually stick this to the base. And like I said, we will be screwing these in place anyway. So just like that. Just take my sled. I'm just gonna line up my two marks right here. I'm gonna roughly drop that in place. Get that lined up with the front. Happy days there. Push that in a little. That is all lined up. So that glue is starting to go off already. But without the activator, we've given ourselves a small bit of time. So it's not too bad. Okay, that's happy days. So we'll just keep that pressed down until the glue goes off. Okay guys, there we are, runners are now in place. So it's just a case of let the glue set up, flip it over, drill some countersunk screws, screw them in place, a couple of countersunk screws into the back fence, and now we're good to go on this. So it's only a case to just drop it over, line everything up with our slots, and now our crosscut sled runs nicely inside in those two slots. Just like that, happy days. Now, we have to look at the T-tracks, and I have made a bit of a mistake in the build, so we're gonna to have to try and work around this now. Let's crack on. Okay, so we're on to routing in the T-track. Now, I made a bit of a boo-boo here. I should really have done the routing before I put the back fence on, that way I could set up my router on my track and my sled, 
and just run it straight through, no problems whatsoever. Now I can't do that, it makes it a little bit more awkward, but it's not the end of the world. It's only gonna make a difference by about an inch or two. I'll give you in for a close look now and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna be routing in T-tracks into this so that I can use the hold down clamps for holding material. I'm actually gonna put two T-tracks on this side so that I can make a fence that I can set to any angle and I can screw that to the T-track as well. And then I'm gonna have just one on this side, again, for clamping down materials. It'll be somewhere around here, close to the blade that I can clamp anything I want down with. So that's the plan. Now, what I should have done was just routed it straight through so I could use my uh, Bosch track and I have my router slate here. And it's very easy to set this guy up. Just set it up on the line that I want and just push that straight on through. Now, obviously I can't go straight on through now because the fence is in the way and that's glued in place. So my router bit has to stop here. Now, it's not the end of the world because the T-track does not have to go all the way to the end and I hadn't intended on putting it all the way to the end. I had intended on putting it somewhere about there. Um, and obviously I'd have to leave a gap then that you can drop your nuts down into and get them into your T-track. So that's roughly where I wanted to leave it. It just means I'm going to take it back a small bit. But that's perfectly fine. That's more than what I'll need. That's a plenty of clamping area and it's more than enough then for my fence to operate as well. So it's not actually the end of the world. It just would have been easier if the fence wasn't in the way. That's all really. So let's get on and route in our slots for our T-tracks. Okay, so there we go, we're all routed in. Now one of the other reasons I used such a thick base, three quarter or 90 millimeter base, because I knew I was gonna be routing these in and I still have a good bit of material left underneath my T-tracks. So they are in and they're perfectly flush. So just a little gap at the back, that's important. So I can let the T-nut down into it, just like that. So that'll just be a clamp. So my blade is gonna run up here and I can just clamp material down and uh, run it against the blade so I can be as accurate as possible. Now, the reason I have two on this side is that if I build a fence, so if I was to take my UJK fence, I can put clamp there, clamp here, and you can run that at different angles when you make a fence. So you can run whatever angle you want against your blade. Now, I won't be using this, this is just to illustrate the point. But if I have a slot in a piece of timber here, you can screw it here, screw it here, and then you can match that to any angle you want. So that's the idea. We'll make that fence in a later video. Now, we need to put the kerf into this so that we can start building our front fence and start squaring everything up. And these slots do not have to run parallel to the blade, so you don't have to square these up. That's not important. The most important thing to square now is the front fence. And in order to do that, we have to get our kerf into this. So let's do it. Okay, guys, we're gonna put the kerf of the blade into this now. So I'm gonna have a straight line of our blade running into this piece. I'm not gonna cut it all the way through because if I do, then this can open and close down here. I don't want that. I will cut it all the way through when we get our our fence finally in place. But what I wanna do is run it just a couple of inches in from the edge here, and then we can use this to square our front fence off. So I have the cross cut blade in there. Now there's no guard on this, so I have to be extremely careful here. And uh, this is a heavy piece that I have in my hand, so I just wanna keep my hands well away from that blade. I have my goggles, I have all my protective gear on, so let's just do this now.
Okay guys, so it's a few days later and I'm back at the crosscut slit. Now I'm busy making the front fence. This is the most important one. This is the one we have to get exactly right. So I'll just show you a quick close up of what I'm doing here and we get on and make it. Right, so as I said, I'm using the UJK track and stop kit and that's this piece of aluminium extrusion here. You can kind of see the edge profile on it. So this has to slip down in between my two pieces of plywood. I also have to recess this into the back piece and there needs to be 10 millimeters in the difference between the front and the back in order for this to sit correctly. Now, I should just point out, you could just use T-track here, route one into the front and route one into the top. That would work as well, but I've got the, the kit, so that's what I'm going to be using. Now, the height, of my fence is dictated by the length of my stop. So I've rough cut these on the track saw now. I'm going to run these through the table saw to make sure that they're perfectly parallel and that everything is exactly square. I'm going to take about five mil off this, which will drop this down another five mil and five mil off this, and we should be good. So let's run these through the, through the table saw now, and then we have to cut a recess into this one, or a little rebate there, so that this track will sit in and we can close the two of these up. Okay, so I have both parts of my fence now cut to the correct dimensions and they're perfectly parallel. Now I want to recess this piece into my back fence. So I've just set the blade to this depth here and I'm going to take a couple of passes and just take, it's about two mil, two and a half mil I need to take off it. So it's just about the width, exactly the width of the blade. I need to take off the front of this fence. So we'll do that now and we'll just check. Okay, so we have the rebate in our back piece and I just went ahead and glued and screwed these together exactly the same way as I did with the uh, stabilizing fence on the back. Now you can see that the aluminium extrusion fits in there, lovely slots in there nicely, so that's perfect, happy days. Now, a couple of things we have to make sure of here, and when I was screwing this together, I was just being 100% certain that this front of fence is perfectly square to the base, that's essential, and we also need to make sure that our fence is perfectly flat. So I'm gonna take a straight edge, I have a stability level here, it's a four foot level, which is exactly the width of my fence. I'm going to clamp this to it when I'm doing the final screwing of this to the base to ensure that this fence is perfectly straight all the way across. And then we have to make sure that we're perfectly square to our blade. So uh, yeah, let's do that now. Okay, so we're on to attaching the front fence. Now, I have my level clamped to the fence here to make sure I've pulled it perfectly straight. I've put a countersunk screw in this side so that this fence is fixed to the crosscut sled here. It's clamped on this side, so we can pivot on that screw now forward and backwards so I can square it to my blade. Now, I know that I have it perfectly square to the base of my sled. I can see with my engineer square that I have the blade perfectly square on both sides and all the squares in my shop are saying that this is now square. So I know it to be square. Now you can use what's called the five cut method um, if you want to be really clinical about this. I don't feel like it's necessary. I've done it on my MFT table. I've already demonstrated it. I've done it on a previous crosscut sled, but everything I've squared with this square and it's a grade one engineer square, so I know it to be true. Um, even using the five cut method afterwards didn't improve anything. So I don't feel it's necessary once you know you have a square that is true, that's good enough in my opinion. But if you want to use the five cut method, by all means go ahead and do that. I wouldn't tell you guys not to do it, but I'm not gonna do it in this instance because I know my square to be perfectly square and that is perfectly square to my blade. So I have everything set up here now. I'm gonna drill a bunch of countersunk screws underneath this fence and I'm gonna lock it down because I know I'm good to go. Okay, now that our fence is all nice and square and in place, I'm just gonna drop the uh, tracks in. These are quite a snug fit. Also, lovely stuff. And that's quite a good friction fit, so these mightn't even require any screws to hold them in place. 
because like I said, we have a good friction fit all the way along the length. Okay, so we are all assembled. Now the fence is in place. My tracks are on top. Now they're such a good friction fit. I'm not going to put countersunk screws in them. There's no need. They are not going to budge anywhere and I can always pull them out and reuse them or remake a fence later if I need to. Um, so that's good enough. Now I just added a block to the back of this. It's just a piece of 2x4, 4x2. That's all it is. It's just to keep my hands away from this area. Remember not to put my hands here and lets the blade run out into this without running all the way through. So that's just an important just little safety feature. It's only just a block. That's all. Now I've just checked and rechecked everything again. We are perfectly square to our base all the way along our fence, which is happy days. I'm also perfectly square to my curve on both sides. So, now it's a case of, it's almost time to test this thing out. So let's just get some paste wax or machine wax all over the bottom of this to help it slide better. And uh, then we start doing some test cuts. Right, I'm just gonna hit the underside of this with some machine wax. Just get a layer on just to help it slide better. It's quite a big slate. So we wanna reduce the friction as much as possible. Get plenty onto those runners as well. Okay, there we go. You can see the difference that the paste wax made. So it just slides nicely there. No effort whatsoever. So even though it is big and heavy, which is actually to its advantage because it's nice and stable, there's no problem pushing it over the saw. It's actually effortless, as you can see. It almost slides on its own. So happy days. Now, let's do a few test cuts on this particular saw. Now, one thing I should actually point out before I continue on is that the part of the rail that juts down into my fence is actually gonna hit the blade, but this is aluminum and you can actually cut through it. So I've been chopping this on my chop saw. So I'm gonna run one cut straight through my fence as well. And uh, that'll be cut, it'll be permanently in place so it won't be too big of an issue. So let's do that. Anyway, so you can see absolutely painless. There's no problem running aluminum or aluminium through on your blades. They can handle it. All these new modern blades can cut multiple materials and that just went through that like butter. So that's that curve put into that now. So happy days. Now again, I'm seldom going to be using the blade at its full height, so it's not really going to be an issue. It's kind of smaller pieces that I'm going to be doing on this laying flat. So uh, yeah, like I said, it's not going to really be an issue. And it's very important again, have this block here so that you always remember to keep your hands out of the way of this. Okay guys, we're all set up to do our first cut, our first test cut of everything in place. We have our clamps run up and down our T-tracks. We have our stop here. We can shoot left and right. I've just added some tape to the top of this. So left hand or right hand and left hand measuring tape. This one starts from the right hand curve out. And I have 725 millimeters. This one starts from the left hand side of the curve out and that gives me 490 millimeters. So it's just a nice quick reference to see where to set up my stop. Now, first cut I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a piece against the fence. These two edges are perfectly parallel. Well, they're relatively parallel anyway. I won't say they're perfectly parallel, but if I can put a cut in this, and flip the piece over and have no gap, I know that I'm cutting square. So let's do that. Okay guys, so there's our cut. If I flip this piece over, we should match up with no gap and that's pretty good there if you ask me. So that's a good way of testing if something is square. Run a cut, take this piece, flip it back against your fence, have a look and see if you can see any gap. Now those two are perfectly against the fence and there's no gap there whatsoever. So I'm good and square. We can do this test again with an even bigger piece now. Let's do that. Okay guys, there's a piece of plywood I've just cut. So I flip this one over, put that against our fence. There you go. Happy days 
no gap all the way along the length and that's kind of a good long length and a good long test i'm not going to be cutting things much bigger than that so happy days indeed just check this corner for square that is perfectly square check this side for square yeah perfectly square happy days now that's good enough for me so yeah that's pretty good Right, so there we go, one large capacity cross cut sled all done. Pretty happy with how that turned out. It's good and accurate and it has all the bells and whistles that I wanted on it. So the quick stop is nice for setting up repeat cuts. Good reference tape up on top. T-tracks in the base. I can put an adjustable fence in there and I have to cut at any angle I want. And the clamps are absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend if you're building a cross cut sled that you seriously think about putting in the clamps because you can clamp that material and keep your hands up and away from that blade because it's running in the cross cut sled without its guard. So um, yeah, it's a good idea to have the clamps in. And especially if you're doing really fine work and you're trying to hold a small piece in here against where the blade is, it's not a great idea, but the clamp can do that for you and you can keep your hands up away from it. So it's a fantastic addition to your table saw, for especially for those repeat cross cuts. The table saw is not great at doing cross cuts. The miter gauges that come with them are not fantastic and you never want to cross cut against your fence because you can get kicked back. So that's where the sled really comes in. And it's essentially a zero clearance insert now as well. So you get really fine cuts without any tear out and you can do multiple angles on it as well. So that's it guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed that one. Uh, if you have, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, think about subscribing. Thanks to everybody over on Patreon who continue to support the channel that's very much appreciated guys you're going to see me use this in multiple upcoming videos now i'm going to put this through its paces i have a few projects planned so um, the crosscut slate is going to come in very handy indeed and it's a nice addition like i said to the table saw so that's it guys i'm going to get out of here now and i shall see you in the next one take it easy